Welcome to the College Football Bros. I'm Michael Newman. I'm Ryan Newman. And I'm Trey Newman. Another bombshell in conference realignment for the second straight year here. This time, the Big Ten presidents have voted unanimously to add USC and UCLA uh, to their conference, which is going to happen in 2024. Just kind of uh, happened very quickly here, all in one day. Uh, Ryan, Trey, what were your guys' thoughts? What was kind of your initial reaction to this to this move? I mean, actually, my re- initial reaction wasn't uh, surprisingly, it wasn't shock, uh, just because we've seen these big shifts in, in changes with conferences over the years. I mean, you just mentioned Texas and Oklahoma a year ago. That was such a big splash to the SEC. Really, my my biggest reaction was immediately thinking, holy crap, Michael, you called this. You were talking to us yeah. offline on that we were re- uh. recording another podcast, and he brought this exact scenario up that USC – they would be exploring and going to the Big Ten. It's crazy. <laughs> I just, I so regret, I was telling you guys, I need to get this out on the pod. I've been stewing on a take that yeah. USC is going to go to the Big Ten. And now it's too late. I've, I missed my yeah. chance, but <laughs> at least I told you guys. So you guys think I'm yeah. smart. No, we're, we can, we can validate it. Absolutely said it. And I didn't think it would be UCLA, though. That, that part, I, I would have guessed that Oregon yeah. would be the other pairing, yeah. but sure. I'm guessing the way it worked but out for sure, it was, it was the. Yeah, apparently it was the schools that approached the Big Ten and not the other way around. So who knows? But I'm guessing maybe USC was, of course, thinking they wanted to join the Big Ten and, and chose UCLA as, as their partner to go. Well, we'll see if that's the official thing that happened. Who knows? That, yeah, I'm, I mean, they, that's rampant the, speculation. The, the, yeah, speculation about them, USC, choosing UCLA. But mm-hmm. from supposedly the, the schools did ask first. So, I'm, yeah, I'm not surprised, man. It's just like... Like Trey said, you're growing numb to all these major seismic shifts in the landscape of college football. So, I'm I'm accustomed to it. Although, as an LA guy, I'm a uh, I'm happy about it. I I get to see some more cool teams come out west, man. Like I'm gonna get to see Ohio State. I'm gonna get to see my team Nebraska come in and all those great programs from the Big Ten. So that's exciting, but not all that shocked. Yeah, it is exciting. There's gonna be some great matchups with USC and UCLA and all the the top schools in the Big Ten, but it is kind of sad. Like we're, we're from the West coast. We live in California. We grew up in Seattle. So we loved PAC 12 football growing up PAC 10 and now PAC 12, uh, maybe back to PAC 10. We'll see. But yeah. it is kind of sad that having this, like, cause college football has been a regional sport. You had the PAC 12 out West had their own kind of identity and all the other, you know, power conferences and missing that. I mean, we're, I'm going to miss that. I'll, I'll say that. But even though I'm somewhat excited for, for what's to come. Um, okay, so how about your thoughts from from USC and UCLA's perspective, and I guess then from the Big Ten's perspective? Does this does this move make sense? Like, what? Why do you think it happened, and does it make sense to you? I think, as far as like USC is concerned, I don't think it really mattered. Like, it it, it was going to make sense no matter what they did because they're such a huge brand that they were going to be safe. Like, every somebody was going to want them eventually. They're not going to get like left in the dust. So, but to the Big Ten. Yes, I think it does make sense. You're going to get more money. You're going to get more recognition as, you know, a school that, you know, if you were on the Pac-12, you only played the West Coast teams. Now you're going to be playing in the big house uh, at the shoe. So you're going to get more of that national kind of look. So if you're a team like, you know, the few years back when Christian McCaffrey, I mean, that's Stanford, but, you know, a lot of people thought he should have won the Heisman, but he just maybe didn't have the eyeballs from from a lot of the voters because his games were on so late, but. Now USC, you're going up against those types of brands. I think it'll probably help them grow. And if you're a, a recruit maybe on the West Coast, you're probably thinking like, hey, you know, USC's maybe even more attractive now. you got to play some big-time teams. But And UCLA, I think, you know, I think it absolutely does make perfect sense for them to stick with USC. It's a natural rival, get more money. It's I, Yeah, I think it makes sense either both ways. I mean, yeah, this is, this is about money. USC and UCLA stand yeah. to make like more than double what they were making now from – huge from TV revenue. It's going to be insane. So I, that's why I was thinking that this was likely to happen. There's just too much money for it not to happen. And, um, you know, especially as the sport is evolving and some of this money, who knows, may eventually be going to players or at least boosters money will be going to players and less of it going to the schools. So, you know, getting that hundred billion dollars a year from the big 10 or whatever, it's going to be, is going to be very useful. And it's going to ensure that you don't get left behind 
the the, the other big brands the, like Ohio State and all the big brands in the SEC. Yeah, and and just adding on to that that money conversation, I think SC, of course, by moving to the Big Ten, will make more money. But they also were kind of feeling like, like, hey, we're kind of want, even though they haven't on the field been great, they're still the the kind of the marquee brand of the Pac-12. But they they had to think we're splitting some of this revenue, the lower revenue than these other conferences with the Oregon yeah. states, Washington states of the of the world. They. They want they bring more than that, so that's it, it was a no brainer from SC and UCLA's perspective. And people are kind of wondering, like UCLA, what UCLA they they got good overall sports pro- program, football, basketball, and of course the Olympic sports. But and the Big Ten for the Big Ten, this was like the perfect timing for them as they negotiate their next big TV deal, just because this just exponentially adds, LA, baby. adds value to them. I mean, they can just name their number. They can yeah. name their number. Yeah, there's. Obviously, right now, the Big Ten and the SEC, are they were already, have had already separated themselves from the rest of the conferences, but now it just gets even crazier. Yeah, it's just it's not over. even close. And the, the, um, the Big Ten now gets to use, like, uh, L.A., of course, for some of their events and maybe even potentially brings into the conversation Las Vegas, getting that West region. Yeah, so it makes a little more sense. Big for that geographically. Um, okay, so what's next for the Pac-12? Um the Pac-12 is is in trouble, which which sucks because I'm sure the big question right now is will Oregon and Washington follow to the Big Ten? I'm sure they want to, of course. Any anyone in the the Pac-12 right now is looking to get somewhere better if they can, and those those are the, probably the two biggest remaining brands. We'll see if the Big Ten uh, is interested in adding them. That would obviously be another death blow to the Pac-12, but maybe Cal and Stanford as well. Um, we'll. We'll have to wait and see, but the Big Ten supposedly might not be done adding teams. No, I, I yeah, would be surprised yeah, the, at this point. Go ahead, Trey. Well, I was just going to say they could be – they're they're kind of in a tough situation. Maybe they could be looking at uh, – I, I feel like the, the remaining schools – they're not going to be necessarily maybe happy with only getting maybe adding a couple Mountain West programs to kind of get the Pac-12 back. I think they they could be looking at um, Big 12 moves. Maybe they're seeking a deal to maybe merge with the Big 12 just to kind of get the best of what they can all together. Yeah, that's where I think it's going. I think they're going to have to look outside of you know the the West. You know, just adding Boise or San Diego State is just not going to do anything for them. I mean, they might end up doing that, but they need, even if that, by adding the Big 12, though, you're not really, I mean, it'll help to add TCU, Texas Tech. I mean, it's Oklahoma State. Those have are nice brands, but they're not, you're still never going to be able to, they will never match the Big 10. They will never match the SEC. They're going to no. be lagging behind. So those schools are just going to be in a dis, huge disadvantage. Like if you don't get into the Big 10, you don't get into the SEC, you're playing from behind the eight ball, like. All, all the time now it's just you're just not going to be able to financially compete ever so it is just a a race to see if you can get into one of those two conferences and and maybe it's not one of those two because i mean klyavkov the the commissioner for the pac-12 the new commissioner he's got a very tough job right now trying to keep them together because potentially there could be other conferences trying to poach from i mean the big 12 could be trying to poach from the pac-12 they could add arizona arizona state utah colorado who knows or Maybe even the ACC, uh, which maybe let's just brings us to our, our next discussion is what is next nationally? Like there's a million different directions this all could go. What's kind of at the top of your mind, Trey? Well, I mean, if you know the answer to this, you're lying just because this always jumps out of nowhere. And just when you think the, the, the plates have locked in, it something happens. But like I mentioned, maybe the Pac-12 seeks a merger with the Big 12. Um, maybe the SEC entertains the a- some ACC schools. Uh, same with the Big 10. Maybe they're kind of playing in the ACC there. I saw a rumor about like Kansas potentially joining the Big East for all their sports and just going independent for football. Might not be the worst idea. I mean, there's going to be. Well, I also but I guess overall, trying I'm trying to get into the Big 10. That's yeah. But really, I'm just more curious right now about the Pac-12. I just want to see how the the dust settles there. Yeah, I'm I you brought up the ACC. I would be very nervous if I were them because uh, you're obviously getting these kind of two super conferences forming. So teams like Clemson, Florida State, Miami, North Carolina, 
it would be very attractive. They would make a lot more money if they were somehow able to join one of the one of those two conferences. Now I know they've the ACC has a grant of rights, so I don't know contractually if those teams are locked in. But you know, if if they aren't, um, man, they that would be pretty attractive to them. They'd make a lot more money in those other conferences. And also Notre Dame is is another team yeah. because obviously they're independent, but this sort of consolidation, continued consolidation, might might start forcing their hand to try and join one of these super conferences, if for no other reason than money. It's now becoming more uh, financially lucrative to join a conference. And also just in the structure of the sport and scheduling, it's it might be become more difficult in the future if they're, if they're not in a conference. And for the, the ACC, the one thing they have going for them is that if Notre Dame joins a conference before 2036 contractually it has to be the ACC now I just saw a tweet from Heather Dinich saying that actually the grant of rights only applies to other sports besides football so they could pay an exit fee and who knows so I don't know if that's possible but we'll see because Notre Dame to the Big Ten makes a whole ton of sense yeah yeah it Big Ten definitely wants them of course uh I think the ACC will get hit eventually um maybe sooner rather than later could be within a year. Uh, there's going to be teams that leave and I, I Miami's gone. Clemson's going to be gone, North Carolina, but then where's the cutoff is the thing. Like, so the sec is going to get bigger. The big 10 is going to get bigger. They're going to take the top brands. Then I see kind of like two other, almost like G five programs we've been having now, kind of like two lower ones, just maybe just like an East and a West. They'll try to join up together and just make a decent conference if they can. Um, because I just don't see ACC uh, staying in the long term. There's just not enough. They're not going to be able to to match uh, the SEC financially. So, and the SEC will want Clemson. They will want Miami. So, if they want them, they're going to be able to get them because they're just going to be able to offer them a ton more money. We'll see. What what if the the ACC right now? I mean, if you're ACC commissioner, you got to be in survival mode. You got to be trying to add anyone you can right now. If that's Notre Dame, obviously that's going to be easier said well, than done. Yeah. But but maybe f- from the leftover Pac-12, maybe you try and get Washington and Oregon if the Big Ten doesn't add them. And and those are two valuable brands. So maybe you Still, try and become yeah. that kind of third power conference, even if you're not as powerful as the, the Big Ten and, and SEC. Yeah, well, it's possible. I guess it's possible. I think I prefer my crazy idea to your crazy idea. <laughs> yeah, I, well, who knows? Who knows it's what's going to happen? Who the heck knows? Yeah. All right. Well... Any other thoughts? I'm sure we'll discuss this more on future episodes too. But we good? I, some yeah, people. By the time this is released, some other is... domino will fall. Yeah, it's that's true. Some people are saying this is going to be a bad thing. You know, it's for good. I I don't know. I, I don't think any of these moves that are being made are like that. You know, all these college football world changing so much. Well, we got playoff. We got paying players. We're changing conferences. All I know is at the end of the day, there's going to be college football. People love it. And I'm going to be watching it on Saturday, so I'm still going to be excited. So I think everybody just needs to go with the flow and chill. Okay. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it is what Ryan. it is. It's happening, so hey, there's yeah. there's not much point fighting it, I guess. But yeah, let us know it's, your it's thoughts. It's exciting. Yeah, it is exciting. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Also, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you like college football, because like I said, I'm sure we'll have more on this, and we cover college football all year round. So thanks again for watching. See you next time. You've been watching the College Football Bros. Be sure to subscribe here on YouTube and in your podcast app for college football content all year round. For bonus episodes and access to our Discord chat, join our Patreon at patreon.com slash college football bros. Thanks for watching.